This program is from chapter 9, and what we're demonstrating here is adding an additional custom class to your program and looking at how the custom class can use get and set accessors using a property. So what this program is going to do, let's first demonstrate it. It's going to get the length and width from the user input. So if we did two by four and we clicked get area, which multiplies the length times the width, it displays that here in this label. So we accomplish this simple task, but we do it in an object-oriented way using object-oriented programming by adding a custom class to our project. So remember to add a custom class. We right-click on our project, add new item, and we choose class. We name that class. So <clears throat> in this case, we left form one as the default name of our form. We added a custom class actually here called called rectangle and let's look at first of all if we have this form we have the length this length label we have a text box here for user input we have another text box for additional user input for the width and then we have this label that displays the output of the area which is length times width so we have one button, we look at the event handler. So let's just get through that code first. First of all, we need a variable to, just to store the length, a variable to store the width. Basically what the user has entered in, it will accept doubles. So we wanna use the try parse in case the user tries to enter in something that's not a number or a double. For instance, they tried to enter text. That's how we would handle the data input so we get the text property remember when the user hits the um the when a user types in a value in a text box it is interpreted as a string which is also why we have to parse that into a double so we get the value the user is typed in the linked text box and we out that to the rectangle length variable up here which is of type double. That's why we use try parse to double. We get the same thing for the user input in the width text box by getting the value from the text property and we out that to the rectangle width double variable. Now once we do that we have the values that the user has typed in the two text boxes. We then create an instance in, uh, with of our rectangle class which we added to our project over here so we have rectangle and then we give it a name of our instance we call it a rectangle and we have this new keyword which remember that's how we create an instance of our class that we've added to our project and it's going to execute the default constructor here so let's look at our class and this is the typical setup for a class <clears throat> what you're going to have at the top of the class is you're going to have some fields, what we call backing fields, you see with this underscore in front of the name. And so these fields can be used by all the methods within the class. They're of data type double. We have one called underscore length, the other one's called underscore width. Our default method, constructor method, is the same name of the class. So our class is called rectangle. It's inside of the namespace multi-class rectangle project. Remember that's the name of our project is the namespace. So inside of rectangle, we're gonna initialize our backing fields to zero, 0.0, 0, .0, 0, 0 0.0 because they're doubles. And then we come down here and we offer a property to our class and it has get and set accessors. <clears throat> Remember, this means that the class is read and write capability. So we get the length and we return that in the length right here, backing field. And we can set the value of length so we can write to that with underscore length. We also have another property called width and we have get and set accessors and they get the value stored in the width backing field and it can set the value in the backing field. We also have a method that's read only. We know it's read only because it only has a get accessor. It does not have set. 
And the only thing that this property is responsible for is calculating the length times the width, which is the area. So we have a get accessor and we're going to return underscore length times underscore width. Okay, so let's look at the application of this. So once we have created an instance of the A rectangle or the rectangle class, we call it A rectangle in memory, we can then access the, the rectangle class properties. So here we have the name of our instance called A rectangle. We're going to access the length property and we're going to, it's going to access the set accessor and it's going to uh, set the underscore length backing field with the value stored in the rectangle length variable, which we know is set up here. We're then also going to assign and execute the property of width. We're going to assign that the value of the rectangle width. So it's going to um, it's going to execute the width property and it's going to set using the set accessor the value of the underscore width backing field to the value that's inside of the rectangle width from the what the user has typed into the width text box. Once it does that, we're going to change the text property of our area label. And to do that, we're then going to access our a rectangle, our rectangle class, and this time we're accessing the property area. And remember, by this time, the class has underscore width and underscore length backing fields assigned. They're both set. And so we can get those. And this is strictly a read only property. And it's going to output that value as a string and display it within to formatting. So it's going to do this. So again, we'll do three by six. And it displays it within two, meaning in the double format with two decimal places at the end. So three times six is 18.